So now I'm going to have the pleasure of uh, welcoming up Charles from Turbo Images. So Charles, I'll ask you the same thing. Introduce yourself. Tell the audience a bit about Turbo Images and what you guys are all about. Yeah. Can you hear me well? Perfect. Um, so Turbo Images has been dedicated to do fleet graphics. So the best example is STM. Um, so all the transit systems, the graphics on the buses, that's what we do. Um, so you see our work all across North America. We are a Quebec-founded Quebec company based in La Beauce, Saint-Georges. Um, we all now have a place in Montreal. We're opening Gen 1st in Boisbriand, um, a place in Toronto, and also in St. George. We're 120 employees. Um, my father launched the company 27 years ago. I'm second gen, joining the force uh, with my brother. Um, so very, very, very proud. <coughs> Customers such as Coca-Cola, um, all across North America, that's, that's our work. Coors Light, um, Parmalat, Agropur, um, just those big names that you see on the road, those moving billboards, that's us. So we, we, we are really proud to see our work and be like, wow, we did that, right? I was driving up from Toronto and I was like, oh, that's us, that's us, that's us, that's us. So anyway, really, really proud about what we do and the impact that we create on, uh, on the road and Naprel and so many others. So yeah, that's about us. Excellent. So it, it sounds like you have a lot of great success. Um, I know you've shared with us when we started doing the discovery uh, with you and the team, 25% uh, growth in the last three years. And next year, the target growth is 50%. Yeah, that's so that's correct. very ambitious. Um, yes. So how are you looking to your Salesforce transformation to help you guys achieve that? Um, so as we are growing, so we've had consistent 15 to 20% growth in, within the last five years, years to years to years. So we hope to create a system through Salesforce that is replicable and that can grow with us, right? Um, it's, we are, we used to be a human driven company. So we had a lot of great people that were driving our company, but now we're trying to sh sh to transition towards more a process-oriented company. So the process will help us grow as they are replicable, right? And we use Salesforce to, to do that. Excellent. Right? So I, I know also part of the challenge uh, for Salesforce and us at the beginning was you were evaluating a lot of other systems. Yep. You were evaluating Zoho, Insightly, HubSpot, Microsoft. Yep. So what, what were the main factors that you were looking at in your decision? Um, so a lot of them actually, um, user friendly, we had all our sales rep this many different platforms, got us feedback from them, price was obviously one of them as well. Um, also the potential in the future as we were growing, right? Um, so at the end of the day, and to be fully honest with you, um, if we were to take a decision based on our current state a year ago, we were going with Opspot, but at the end of the day, we thought three years down the road, Upspot will be limiting us because of their features and all the potential, all the potential they don't have. So we said, you know what? Let's go in Ferrari rather than going with the Prius for now. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we just took on the Ferrari, and now we're we're all set for the next plus year, the ten plus years, right? So we didn't want to change for a system and change again down the road in three years. So we Very all smart. we went all in. Very good. Yeah. Um, so part of your challenge is three quarters of your sales reps are always on the road. Exactly. Um, so the importance of being mobile friendly and providing access on the road to be, to be able to have those salespeople deliver the experience was important. Yeah. So what's the biggest advantage that you've seen, you've realized so far from the mobility or your sales perspective? It's just everything is connected and you can get everything from your cell phone. So we transitioned from ACT, which is very old dated, very simple type of CRM, to all in CRM in my pocket pretty much. So I can do anything from my app and yeah, log my call, log my emails, track my opportunities just before walking in the meeting with my customer. Even as a manager, so I, I do about 20 plus trade show per year all across North America. So I have all my dashboard on my cell phone. I can track uh, my team, see what's going on with the ongoing cases, opportunities. Um, so it was just very, very easy to use the mobile transition for us. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so you mentioned ACT. I remember ACT yeah. like back when I was started in the mm -hmm. IT world. So what's been the, the biggest impact from moving from an ACT type of environment to Salesforce? All, <laughs> everything. <laughs> um, no, it's just such a big difference, right? When you look at Salesforce, the question is, not if you can do it, is how you can do it, mm -hmm. right? In ACT, it was, can you even do that, right? 
So anyway, it will, it's limitless. So that's what, I, what I do. Yeah, yeah, night and day. Yeah, pretty much. Sure. Um, so again, part of the same question um, that I asked George is, what made you finally select us to help? Because we are not the only ones yeah. um, out there. So um, a few things. Uh, pricing was fair. Um, I'm not looking for the best option, you know, cost oriented. You were in the middle ground there. Um, the people, so you came to the table, very knowledgeable. Um, your expertise that you were bringing, we appreciated that. Um, and yeah, we felt like we could trust you. And the word I was using, the thing we were looking for was a partnership, right? Um, and we were looking partners and you felt within our value set that we have at Turbos for selecting our partners. So that makes sense for us. And so far after a year, um, no regrets. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's, always, it's always a pleasure. I mean, now we have projects that go askew, um, but it's really refreshing to understand partners like Turbo and like eSmart that, you know, it is a relationship. InCloud prides itself on the relationship and the experience that we, we deliver to our customers. And that, at the end of the day, helps us get through the rough times because we've had you know, hiccups throughout the, throughout the past happens. year. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but I think our dedication to delivering success, my goal is always to want to bring customers like George and Charles to Dreamforce because we have the ability to bring them there and showcase them on the world stage as to how Salesforce and the work that we've done together to really transform that customer experience. Yeah. Uh, so ultimately, by the way, that's my goal. So maybe not next year, maybe the year after, but we'll get there. So Good to know. noted. <laughs> um, if so I can, if I can talk to that, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know those hiccups. There's no perfect relationship, and when we did add those hiccups with InCloud, well, you know we sat we sat down and we mm -hmm. we came to an agreement that made sense for everyone. So they do listen to our needs and they do are flexible, which I do appreciate. Excellent. Yeah. So when we did uh, the exercise to redefine uh, your sales cycle roadmap together, yes. uh, were there any aha moments that came to light? You, did, did you discover any very clear points that were originally blind, side, blind areas? Um, yes, yeah, so you shared with me something with me that we should go simple rather than going all in. Mm -hmm. um, so my point of view was, let's just build a perfect sales process for a sales team and let's make it complete right now and then let's integrate it rather than training them from a simple process and add on component to it. So I went with my way, even if Greg said you should not, you should go the simple way and then add on component. And that was a mistake, really. Uh, I should have listened to Greg. <laughs> so we went all in, yeah, we went all in with all the complex system. And what it did is our sales team onboarding was quite low. So it was too complicated, too many um, gatekeeper, too many steps. So it, Finally, at the end of the day, right now, what I'm actually doing is I'm dismantling my complex process to make it simple again so people can onboard and then I'm going to add on back to it. So I just added a lot of time on my end and complexified my work uh, to um, make sure that the software was adopted. So yeah. So that, that leads to my next question. Uh, in terms of the adoption, um, how, how has the sales team been receptive and what was the impact to their own productivity. Yeah, um, they see the value, they know it's a great software, and now it's about them using it. Um, the, on, I, I guess our adoption rate right now is about 50%. Um, so everyone is using it. Some people are using it minimally. Um, some younger people like Danny um, and others are a team That's that are part right? of the, yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to come That's because he's using it. <laughs> yeah, thank you, keep, going. <laughs> keep doing that. <laughs> anyway, um, so the younger people in our team that are part of the millennials generation um, do find it easier to use than all my senior people. Um, so that's my biggest challenge right now, getting the senior people that do the great, great work and don't see all the value in logging all the information and having that full visibility. So that's one of my challenges I'm working on right now. But do you see yourself getting to that point that they're... For sure. Yeah, okay. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so what's your favorite... What, what's Charles' favorite feature so far? Um, dashboards. dashboards. <laughs> I love numbers. Uh, you know, human can lie, data don't lie, right? Um, so as a manager, I can just look at the data and see what are the trends, make us uh, make better business decisions as well. So that's all the data, the re reporting are pretty much endless compared to ACT. Uh, so I really do appreciate that. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so do you, can you share, like, what was the main friction or pain point that you were or you see yourself 
solving for your customers by having this new technology platform available to your teams. Yeah. So one of the weakness of Turbo is we work in silos. So if you, let's say you become one of my customers, there's going to be five service agents throughout their entire process communicating with you. Um, so that's a lot of people touching our customer and a lot of expectation are in men because what the sales rep says well, might not get to the end of the day uh, to the invoicing department, right? So we work in silos right now and I'm trying to tear those silos down with Salesforce to bring a visibility 360 uh, to our team. So that's the reason we're actually integrated in launching cases on the 16. Um, so really trying to bring everyone on the same platform so our customer is the center and everyone understands the expectations and what's going to happen next. So that um, slide when I showed the two different roads of the sales and service, that was you Exactly. Now. Yeah. So now you're bringing that, yeah. you know, well, to create that fast track to have that corporate customer data available yeah. to everyone. Exactly, but imagine five lines for us <laughs> rather than just two. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, very challenging. Yeah. Um, so. Would you say that there's an increase in satisfaction for your customers, or do you foresee this coming? Is it too early to tell now? Like, are you able to uh, share what this has surfaced up for your customers so far? Um, for sure, the full visibility of our service team will increase. I cannot say right now because right. we're launching cases in two weeks, in two, right? Okay. Um, however, I'm 100% sure that just bringing that full visibility, people being on the same page in terms of expectations, um, communicating more effectively, and will help our overall customer satisfaction, for sure. And also having cases helping people know that there's actually a problem because right now, let's say Danny has a problem in installation, it will not even know about it. It's how much the silos are built. So right now by bring that down, he knows that there's a problem. He can be upfront with the customer about it. He won't be sidetracked or side blinded by the blind sided by it. So it's just, it's going to help for sure okay. at the end of the day. Yeah. Cool. Um, and having, having a commitment to seeing the value of what you've, took a stand for in terms of transforming that customer experience is a big differentiator. If you go into saying, oh, this is not gonna work, and you know, obviously the, the intention that you bring into the project, um, and Charles and George are a perfect example of, they, they're taking a stand that this will work, and using our services and our team to drive that uh, definitely will bring the success. Um, so part of the metrics you talked about you loved numbers and you loved your dashboards. Yeah. What are some of the metrics of success that you feel um, you right now, focus on? Yeah, right now we're mostly focusing on uh, the sales. So number of activities, for sure, that's a classic. Opportunities, um, the pipeline that is going for the next quarter and for the year. Um, yeah, those are the biggest ones for sure. Yeah, okay. and also we're going to add NPS soon, okay. uh, Net Promoter Score. Um, so that'll be part of it for next year. Um, also tracking all the ROI coming from Pardot, so all, all the investment that we actually put in the, the campaigns digital, the, the campaigns, all of that. All yep, that. so okay. that's coming down the pipe too. Um, and trying to understand, okay, we spend all that money, but is it actually working and help us make right, better right, right, decisions, right? right? right. Okay. So this will be a great add-on from our marketing point Perfect. standpoint. So any, any last recommendations, tips, suggestions? Be careful, don't do this. Uh, like, yeah. What can you share with the, the folks that are thinking about jumping on? Yeah, first of all, listen to Greg. Uh, <laughs> that would be the biggest one. Another quote that's okay. going to go on the website. <laughs> um, uh, baby, baby steps. Um, don't underestimate training. Make sure you have influencers within your team that you can leverage um, to help you ease the change management process because it is painful, uh, let's be honest here. Um, so just use those leaders that you can have. So for m one of my leaders is Danny, he has been using Salesforce forever and he's a positive guy so I know he can be in that team and speak the word and spread the word that it's a good thing and I can leverage him with, it, with that. So make sure that you don't understand, underestimate training, uh, baby steps, that would be the two main takeaways for Fairbrook. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your partnership again um, and wish you all the best success for Go Live for Cases in a couple of weeks. Yeah, thank you very much. Perfect. Thank mm -hmm. you.